it likely doesn't matter how old you are. The shape of the Skynetic Dragonfly should cause some deja vu when you see it. If you're one of our younger viewers, we apologize to your parents, and it might remind you of the Shia Shia Raptor. If you're old enough to be in the throes of hormones and or drug experimentation, it's a Joysway Raptor. If Skrillex was integral in shaping your musical tastes, it's clearly a knockoff of the Hobby King Skipper, or maybe even the Park Jets Polaris. And if you're a true gray beard, thank you for tuning in to Tail Heavy instead of Matlock, because you know it's definitely a foamified version of the Balsa USA North Star, just missing a finicky glow engine. So, why does the shape of Delta Wing flying boat keep getting re-released? Should you have one? And should you get this one? Whoa! Obviously, this kinetic dragonfly doesn't look like your typical RC plane, and it doesn't fly like it either. Its unique shape and general plan form, combined with a low wing cubic loading, means it has a very low stall speed. Combine this with great control response at all airspeeds, and you get some really compelling flight dynamics. It can do some surreal maneuvers that make you feel like you're in a sh G mod physics simulation. It seems to actually stop and go backwards in midair sometimes, kind of like a Cobra, with the right control inputs, in a way that more typical airplanes just don't. But the whole time, it's always honest and predictable, rarely biting or getting too quick. Ice, snow, water, grass, and even hard ground are all surfaces you can fly this from. It's arguably the most versatile aircraft on the model market. It's worth noting, if you pick one up and fly off of anything other than water, you'll want to cover the hole with a few layers of packing tape or a similar lightweight material to protect the foam. Over time, the ground chews away at the foam and eventually will grind the hole down so there's no step, which makes taking off from water extremely difficult. Honestly, we're really just happy that Motion RC didn't put a plastic cover at the bottom to prevent wear and tear because tape is so much lighter and the weight savings is something we really appreciate with this model. It flies light, but it still takes plenty of punishment. Really, if you put a gun to our head and asked us to find something to complain about, it'd have to be that it doesn't come with a reversing ESC, which is a must-have in our opinion with a float plane. We're not really sure why Motion opted not to include one, but at only $189, it's easy enough to justify picking up your own reversing ESC to throw into the model. If you look at the lineage of this airplane, it starts to become obvious why it's so good. This general layout of Delta Wing flying boat started as a North Star. Plans for it were originally published in the AMA's magazine Model Aviation back in 1986, two months before Hands Across America and the release of the original Top Gun. Credit is due to prolific designer Laddie Michalasco, who was really the Burt Rutan of RC without the militant climate change denial. The design was later sold as a kit by Balsa USA. Later, it was resized and released as the Park Jets Polaris, also as plans, and then China got their hands on it. There have been dozens of molded foam versions over the years. Looking at the airplane closely, it becomes apparent how clever the design really is. The prop is up high and away from the water, and the huge wing keeps spray out of it as well. The big fuselage acts as the float, and it sits low, which means nose overs or next to impossible. That prop also blows directly on the elevator and rudder, so low speed control response is great. Turning can be a little difficult on water. Be sure to keep the elevator slightly up to ensure part of the rudder is underwater. Either way, don't expect a tight turn with this plane, especially on a windy day. Step taxiing is fun, but expect an even worse turn radius when attempting this. However, that wide turning circle means that newer pilots won't have any troubles overcorrecting on takeoff. As far as landings go, you have some options. If you treat your airplanes like delicate flowers, you can do a traditional fly around the hole at idle and come off step. Or if you're like us, you can belly flop it like a fat kid, which is obviously way more fun. Pretend you're flying an F-22 and yank the elevator into a Cobra just above the water and just above stall speed. The plane virtually bleeds off all energy midair and then plops onto the surface. Hopefully, you didn't come in with enough energy to flip it on its back. Another thing we had fun with was doing one spons and touch and goes, which our friend Nate showed us at Nall. Be careful doing this because you can probably imagine a scenario where the water pulls the plane in, but it's worth mentioning we never had it bite us doing spons and touches. Stick jamming is the happy dust of this aircraft for us. This becomes even more addicting when you move the CG back further, but be careful doing so because on an off-camera flight, we almost destroyed ours getting it stuck in a permanent spin, which will happen if you have the CG far enough back. Either way, on the stock CG, which by the way is conveniently marked, Plenty of fun can be had by going top inside corners or a combination of up elevator followed by sticks in the corners. The real fun is trying to figure out your orientation as it comes out. For those more interested in skill-based flight, it'll do everything one wants, but be aware that once the plane is inverted, you'll need a lot of down elevator to maintain flight. Go ahead and argue about why this is in the comments below, but we'll get you started. 5G. As with any aircraft with a high thrust line, be aware that punching the throttle while at low airspeed will cause the aircraft to pitch down slightly. You know, towards the earth. Just be prepared for this and you'll be fine. Per the website, build time is 15 minutes, but unless you opted for the optional sketchy white powder speed build kit, expect to spend 30 minutes to an hour on it. 
There's absolutely no glue required. In fact, even the wings are held on with double-sided 3M or servo-style tape. There's one review on the Motion RC site, though, about a customer complaining that the wings fell off in flight. Maybe he had Cheeto dust on his fingers when he was putting the tape on, but just add some glue if you're paranoid. We opted not to do this and have been flying the aircraft pretty hard for the last 10 months without issue. This is the first aircraft we bought and not adjusted the push rods for max mechanical travel as it already has gobs of its stock. Due to the gargantuan travel of the control surfaces, we'd recommend going for 60% expo all around on Spectrum. Takeoffs are super easy on hard surfaces. Punch the throttle, let the airspeed rise a little, and then pull back on the elevator. It'll take flight, most likely. As far as water, same thing, just a little bit slower. Let the airspeed rise while dancing on the rudder until you see the plane is on step, then pull back slowly. The higher surface tension of glassy water, though, will make your runway sticky. Be sure to stick it out because it will eventually take off, albeit it will just take a little bit longer. While on the water, you'll also notice that punching the throttle will twist the aircraft on the roll axis to push the left sponson down, which also induces some yaw that can't really be counteracted with rudder at low airspeeds. This is something you have to write out, aka don't reduce the throttle and set up for another takeoff because this will keep happening on repeat. Punch the throttle and let airspeed build up so you have enough airflow over the control surfaces to regain authority again. Trust. We did a lot of float flying over 2023 with it and never had an issue with water getting into the airframe. We did flip it once though, and an expert RC tugboat captain pushed us ashore whether we wanted him to or not. We didn't. In this heroic rescue, the nose was pushed pretty deep under the surface and it took on some water. We quickly unplugged it once we got to shore and let it dry overnight. The next morning, when we went to fly, there was no damage to the electronics. Nice work, Motion RC. Wing rocket high angles of attack are expected with a swept back wing, but surprisingly, we couldn't get it to flip on its back or really scare us. A lot of people online have claimed that they put gyros in their Dragonfly, which we would recommend if you're going from a trainer right to this, or if you just want a more stable flying experience. We like flying ours on a 3S 1300 to keep in line with flying at light, but we also would occasionally use a 3S 2200 to add some time to our timer, and it handled about the same. With the 1300, we set our throttle base timer to 3 minutes and 30 seconds. If we were nitpicky, we'd say that we wish this thing had a little bit more power. It's not a speed issue by any means, but having a little extra thrust would be nice for shorter water takeoffs and nice clean vertical lines. It is what it is. Another thing to be aware of with this model, especially when belly flopping, is that the foam hinges will go bad relatively quickly. Our elevator held up fine, but both the aileron and rudder hinges failed after a month or two. Use hinge tape, aka blender, to rehinge like we did, or use some actual hinges, whatever works for you. Flying this in the wind isn't really that enjoyable, mainly thanks to her low wing cube loading. You'll get knocked around pretty hard, but going for the 2200 instead of the 1300 will help a little bit. Or go for that gyro we talked about before. As far as crosswind landings go, your only option is to decrab, or you can just fly it into the wind as God intended. This is one of our favorite models due to its cheap price and fun factor. Even though it's another iteration of a design that's been around forever, it's a fly outside the box airplane for sure. The Dragonfly, or maybe one of its clones, will always be in our fleet, even if it's sold under a different name from a different company because it's such a proven design. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you wish RC companies sold their plug-and-play aircraft with a speed build option, or maybe hit subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to see how we improved the twin timber, because that's coming soon. Happiest of landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.